Today, to introduce Gene Earhart as our speaker for our sermon today. Gene. You're much too kind. You haven't heard what I have to say yet. I thought a while ago when that great big boom came along, I thought, yes, Lord. imitating Christ's humility. Oftentimes I think we're not so humble. But listen to the word from Philippians, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 18. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with his spirit, if any tenderness or compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in the spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of self-ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but to also those of interest of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ, whom being a very nature God, not, did not consider equality with God something to grasp, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of his servant being met, made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself became obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you and will and act accordingly to, good, to his good purpose. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like a star in the universe. As you hold out the word of life, in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run and labor for nothing, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice of service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice in all of you. So you should be glad and rejoice with me. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come before you, Lord, that we may be fed by your word, that we may reach deep into ourselves and learn more about who we are in you, and especially who you want us to be. Give us wisdom and a heart to serve. May the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing unto you. Amen. Verse 1 here speaks of encouragement, of being united with Christ, of having comfort in the fact that Christ loves us, and that we fellowship with the Holy Spirit and share the tenderness and compassion that is in our Lord Jesus. He wants us to make his joy complete by acting the same 
and with the same compassion and with the same tenderness that Jesus uh, had as he healed those that were sick and as he died on the cross that we might be saved. We are not to have selfish ambitions. I think most of the time we do. We're not to have the attitude of, uh, you know, well, I go to church and I'm a little bit better than that guy down at Diddy's Bar. I'm a little bit better than that drug addict that steals to pay for his habit. But really, we're not. We're not any better than they are. You might think over in your mind that, yes, we are. No, we're not. And the reason we're not is because the difference between them down there and us is that someone took the time to pray for us. Someone took the time to introduce us to Jesus Christ, our personal Savior. That's what makes the difference. Have we taken the time to introduce Jesus Christ to someone lately? I feel that today, more than any other time, the church has an arrogance about it. It's arrogant because we think that we are better than the people out there in the world. We tend to forget that we were once that way too. I think it's time for the church to humble itself and to become that servant that Jesus Christ wants us to be, that God expects us to be. If we're going to be effective in the world, we must do that. Did you ever meet up with someone who thought they were holier than you? We need to learn humility. We go on in this uh, chapter. I think that to be like Christ, we must train ourselves to think like Christ to change our desires to be more like Christ. We need the power of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We need the influence of other faithful Christians. We need to be obedient to God's word, not just exposed to it. Because I think we're exposed to it a lot. If we come to church every Sunday, we're exposed to that word every Sunday. But really, are we being obedient to that word? And that's the question today. The question of obedience. Are we doing all we can? Are we doing all that God expects us to do? He goes on, Paul goes on to say that we are do everything without grumbling and complaining. You know, that's easy to say. But I know when I overextend myself and I become a little bit agitated, I become a little bit grumpy, and my husband will say, well, now, how did that get that way? And then I have to back down, and I have to pull in my horns, and I have to say, it's my own fault. Where's the humility? Where's the doing everything with joy? We're supposed to be a shining star in the universe. Sometimes I think my light shines about as bright as a burnout light bulb. Because I think at times, you know, we get kind of weary. 
about doing what we think God wants us to do. Sometimes we're not even doing what God wants us to do and we kind of get weary of it. We have to look at the humility of it. We have to look at are we really in God's will? Are we really doing what he wants us to do? Are we really humble? Are we really doing the right things? When I think about grumbling and, and um, arguing and things like that, I think in our, on our mission trip, it was this one fellow. Somehow or another, he got his, his nail apron screwed fast to the floor or the wall or something. And um, when that happened, you should have heard him grumble. But it was all in fun, wasn't it, bud? <laughs> it, it was all in fun, and we, we enjoyed each other's company and had a wonderful time. If your joy, if you've lost your joy, there's only one way to get it back. And that's to learn to serve. If you've lost your joy, find a way to serve someone. Do a kind deed for someone. Introduce to someone to the joy that you have But the joy in serving, the joy, the joy that you find in the Lord Jesus. So let us be joyful and glad in the Lord today and always. Let us become as Jesus, humbling ourselves and becoming the servant God intended us to be. In imitating the humility of Christ, let us rejoice in God of our salvation. Let us be workers for the kingdom. Let us bring joy, the joy of our salvation to all we come in contact with each and every day. I pray that many things and many people this week will remind you of your joy that you have in Christ Jesus and what it means to be a servant. I want to step back just a second for the week we spent in Kentucky. I've had a hard time talking about it because it's, it, it affected me so much uh, that I get kind of emotional because it was life-changing. And I know some of you, we've talked to some folks and, and told them a little bit about what we did. But I think that the people that we helped brought joy to us, the kind of joy that you can't get by getting a new car or buying yourself something special or any of those things. Um, I think that they felt and understood the joy we felt in doing what we did for them. And uh, if you've never gone on a mission trip, if you ever get an opportunity, don't pass it up. It's, it was a funny thing, the last place that we worked was this elderly lady, she's 70 years old, and all of a sudden I'm thinking, I said this the other day and I'm thinking, wait a minute, elderly lady, 70, I'm 68 for crying out loud. I don't think of myself as elderly, but it was such an experience and I hope that we can get a program put together so that you all can um, take part in that mission trip as we went to Kentucky. So, let us pray. Our God and our Redeemer, we ask right now that your light constantly shine through us, that we might truly be the church that you have meant us to be. 
that you would remind us continually of our first love to serve you by serving others in your name, that your light may be seen as a beacon in this community through this church and its people. Lord, give us a heart to humbly serve you as we serve others. I pray this in the wonderful name above all others, the name of Jesus. Amen.